This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pauline Shukmak, Jr., host for Outside In. Last Wednesday, like every third Wednesday in January, was opening day at the Hawaiian State Legislature. However, last Wednesday was doubly special because it was also the 125th anniversary of the overthrow of Hawaii's last monarch, Queen Liliuokalani. Here to discuss this with me today, as, other, as well as other intrigues at the palace, is Kippen de Alba Chu, Executive Director of Iolani Palace. Aloha, Kippen. Aloha. Nice to see you again good after see, such a while. Yes, good to see you too, Pauline. <laughs> Brilliant. So, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to be on the palace grounds mm. uh, the opening day because I was busy preparing for a show here. Mm -hmm. But you happened to be there as being director of Iolani Palace. Yeah. So, what was it like? What was the atmosphere like during this Onipa'a Kako? The atmosphere, it was very palpable. I mean, I want to use that word first of all. Uh, because it was both tense, but yet at the same time uh, passionate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, so there were a lot of competing emotions, but overall, everyone knew why we had gathered, mm -hmm. and they were respectful of Iolani Palace, even though the commemoration of this anniversary is not something that's, uh, like say, for the faint of heart, mm. let's put it that way. Uh, there was also a very light blessing mm -hmm. from the sky. It, it was perfect how oh. it, it began to uh, drizzle right about the time of the flag raising. Oh, yeah. okay. That's very yeah. nice. And this happened exactly at 1045 a.m. 1045, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And this isn't the first time this event has taken place, right? The first time was in 1993 during the 100th anniversary correct. of the same event. That's correct. And just like the 100th anniversary, mm -hmm. the 125th had no incidents, no arrests. Uh, it correct. was very peaceful. Yes. And uh, I heard uh, John Osorio was present mm -hmm. to make his speech. Mm -hmm. uh, but you didn't catch any of the speech that he made, right? Uh, you were there. No, I mean, because at the flag raising, it was actually the royal order of Kamehameha actually yeah. spoke from the front steps okay. and then I believe Walter Ritty followed them. Okay yeah. and the actual march for mm -hmm. the commemoration started at the Royal Mausoleum is that right? In and then it right. terminates at Iolani Palace Correct. which is is it considered a sort of a sacred place for the native Hawaiians or just a memory of the overthrow? Iolani Palace? Yes. yes. It is considered sacred and there is a burial site on the grounds. Right. Yes. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took the royal history course and I didn't know that because we visited yeah. the grounds as well to learn about the various plants and trees uh, but yeah. um, and the barracks obviously yes. um, but where is the uh, bur burial site located exactly? there, there is a burial mound it's in the Diamond Head Makai quadrant so mm -hmm. in front of the Kana'ina building so as, uh, from the palace if you're looking towards Kauai Ha'o Church mm -hmm. you'll see there are uh, tea leaves in an enclosure and there's a mound there that okay. represents where the first mausoleum was built okay. for Kamehameha II and and his queen that's right. when they died in London. That's yes. right. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> London's yeah. always very important. Yes. There are very yeah. close connections between yeah. British royalty and uh, Hawaiian monarchy. Correct. So, um, I Iolani Palace is the only uh, mm -hmm. working royal palace, or used to be the only working royal palace in all of the United States. Uh, so, Honolulu is quite special in, it has that distinction. Um, as being the only U.S. city with a, yeah. a working royal palace in the past, because it wasn't all, only the seat of the Hawaiian monarchs. For a little while, it was also the legislature. That's where the legislatures met temporarily before the Capitol building was, met, uh, was built. Actually, it was the legislative building for a long time. Oh, right. No, not, okay. a, not a short okay. time. Yeah. Uh, so what we tell people, because there are royal palaces in other cities in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that are called royal palaces, mm -hmm. but Iolani Palace is the only one that served as an official royal residence that's similar right. to the White House. Oh, okay. So that's the difference. And yeah. they even had, um, so the telephone was working before the White House, is that Right? I don't know about telephone, but electricity, electricity for sure, yes. four years yes. before the White House. Oh, okay, yes. so advanced yeah. in many respects at that oh, time. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Maybe yes. not so much now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so um, that's good that you were able to soak up the atmosphere there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a yes. very rare event. Yes. Uh, but just because it's not a major anniversary like mm -hmm. the 125th, that means mm -hmm. next year they will do 
a similar commemoration or it's only on the big anniversaries, such as the next one coming yeah. up, which might be the 150th? Right, correct. So, okay. Yeah, it's usually on the big anniversary dates. I see. Okay, yeah. so they make the biggest event possible out mm -hmm. of it. So, correct. and then they carry the portraits of uh, Lilio Kalani, is yes. that correct? Yes. And they yeah. left a lot of flower arrangements and lays at the base of her statue. Yes, and, uh, and Ho'okupu. Yes. Yeah, a yeah. lot of times you'll see that. In yeah, TV. because there, yeah. there's always something left yeah. for her there, but even mm -hmm. more so. Correct. So, um, okay, let's just get into a little bit about the other happenings okay. at the palace. Sure. Not necessarily intrigue, yeah. but um, <laughs> other happenings at the palace, because sure. uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is mm -hmm. because even locals, people who live here, mm -hmm. they haven't visited the palace, which I yes. find a little bit odd. Yes. Because as I was speaking with you earlier, what I do, I, I love to travel. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I do, because I love history, I think it's the best way to understand mm -hmm. a local area or a new place, uh, is to go to the local palace or the castle. It's mm -hmm. kind of the base. Because right. uh, a lot of cultures were feudal. They did have kings and queens. Mm -hmm. They did have monarchs. Yeah. And uh, Hawaii is a very good example. In fact, the only true example of that in mm -hmm. the, Americans, uh, the uh, American states. So uh, the first thing I'd personally like to do is go to the local palace or the mm -hmm. castle and the yeah. attached museum. Yeah. But I'm really surprised and shocked when people here haven't done that. And they have, <laughs> they have families here. Yeah. And I said, you know, there's something called Kama'aina Sunday that people can go to at the Iolani mm -hmm. Palace. And it's very uh, people friendly. People can bring their children. Yeah. So what are the various ways people can visit Iolani Palace, whether they're visitors or they're locals? Sure. Okay, so um, speaking about locals first, because you are exactly right, we, we are trying to bring more locals in because so many of our uh, residents have never been there and, and, it, and it's shocking and sad and it's sad at the same time. Mm. So what we tell people is, come in a Sunday. We have it, it's usually the second Sunday of the month, free for all uh, resident, local residents, uh, as well as uh, military. And... Uh, we also do special events throughout the year. So in September, we have this birthday celebration for Queen Lili Okalani called Onipa'a. And so the palace is open free even to tourists during that time. We just open the palace up. It's like an, uh, an open house. Uh, you can go to our website and we have the calendar in there. It shows when the Kamaina Sundays are and when these other spe special events occur. Yeah. And you also have these quilting classes, is that correct? Are you still running those? Those are run separately, but they are okay. uh, on, on the, the grounds, grounds. on the grounds of yes. the palace. Yes. And I, I mentioned this in one of the other shows mm -hmm. uh, on Outside In, was I took the Royal History course, yes. and I think people under are under the misconception that this is solely for people who want to become docents oh, or volunteer yeah. guides for the palace. Right. And I, I was just interested in the information mm -hmm. because I love yeah. history. So people can take that course with Zeta, uh, mm -hmm. and it, they don't necessarily have to become a docent or that sh no. doesn't necessarily have to be their ultimate aim or Not objective. But if they Not do want to become docents, how can they do that uh, at the palace with Zeta? Oh, we actually have a docent training course. Okay. So, it, and that's actually just starting up. Uh, it's a seven-week process. And so they're going to go through and learn actually what it is like to, to lead a tour for people. And then after that, they're going to take the Royal History course. Oh, okay. So, so it's developed since yes. I've taken it. Yes, okay, yes, because yes. I took it several years yeah. ago, and it was literally just the four sessions with Zeta. Oh, okay. yeah. And it was a lovely group of people. Yeah. And it was a mixture of people who just moved mm -hmm. to Hawaii. Yes. Um, their husband was posted there. So it was yeah. a large, by and large, a group of ladies. And uh, people who are just interested in some mm -hmm. place they've lived for so long and didn't really know the yes. intrigue of the history right. of uh, such a beautiful building. Yeah. And uh, how would you, pers because you're the executive director mm -hmm. of the structure. So there are different descriptions of the architectural style of mm -hmm. Iolani Palace. Some people say it's Florentine or American Florentine or mm. Italianate. What is the proper architectural term for it? Because I've seen a few of them listed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It, I think in the yeah. Wikipedia it says uh, Italianate, but I think it's more appropriate to say American Florentine. Or yeah, well, that. the thing is American Florentine, nobody really knows what that means. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That was invented. I don't think most people know what it Italianate. <laughs> 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 well, they're thinking Italian, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's actually, uh, the best description is French Second Empire. Okay, that's yes. a new one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And why uh, is that? What features distinguish it as uh, French Second it, Empire? It, it, because the, that uh, style is also known as the Mansard style, mm -hmm. and Mansard is the, the term for attic. 
in mm -hmm. French and mm -hmm. Italian. Yeah. And it's the use of the attic as a living or working space. And so if you're looking at the palace, you can clearly see in our towers, the roof, there's a window that comes out. So yeah. we have spaces built in and that's one of the features. Another one uh, is the, the veranda, mm -hmm. uh, yes. that the door to, to the entrance of the palace is uh, clearly marked. So you yes. can see that's another feature of it. Uh, that this style of architecture is very common in Washington DC yeah. and the building that ha that's the best example is the old executive office building where the majority of the White House staff work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so Eoline Palace is very similar in oh, okay. style. Yes. Okay, a seat of power. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when I took the course a few years ago, you mm -hmm. had, uh, obviously Onipa'a Kako did not have any incidents, no, mm -hmm. nothing violent no. happened. Right. But uh, I think it was in February a few years ago, you did have one very serious incident with two individuals who broke the, one of the doors. Uh, oh, it was, just, it was just one individual. It was one individual, okay. Yeah. I thought he, they had an accomplice, but it was just one person who It was, it was just one door. person, okay. yes. And yes. I think it's been repaired by now. It was repaired quite quickly, wasn't it? Yes, well, we had plywood up, mm -hmm. and then plywood looks pretty ugly. And mm -hmm. so we've now replaced that with plexiglass. Okay. Which, which actually, it mimics the glass with the design. Oh, okay, uh, thank heavens, yeah. because otherwise yeah. it'd be really expensive. <laughs> okay, no, but we are going to replace, we're, we're getting glass, oh, yes. okay. um, the glass is going to come from Germany, we have an artist in California, he's going to do the acid etching, but that takes a long time. I see, uh, yeah, so yes. you'll have yeah. to keep us informed I when will. that's I will. done. Yeah. Now, some of the other special events um, in terms of mm -hmm. entrance or uh, viewing the palace occurs in December, yes. and that has to do with Queen Kapiolani's birthday. Correct. So her birthday was December 31st, yes. 1834. Mm -hmm. And you have two exclusive, very special evenings where mm -hmm. individuals can tour the palace in the evening and actually walk up that beautiful Koa staircase, yes. right? Yes. So yes. did you have a lot of people this past December? Oh, <laughs> we had the most ever. We actually added oh. a third night. Oh, good. Okay. It's, things are improving, <laughs> Kippen. <laughs> third night. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. So. Yes, the demand is just outstripping our ability to have it open. <laughs> yeah, is, is that for security reasons because it's dark, and or, or is no. it more logistics to get people to stay, the staff to stay on later? It, it's hard for the staff to work at night because we're also open during the day. Yes. Uh, and we don't take on additional staff during this period, so right. people are going through overtime. Also for the entertainment because we do have entertainment on those evenings mm -hmm. and to book entertainment for three successive nights is not easy. And this is very special yeah. entertainment, isn't it? Somebody oh, yes. dresses up like Queen Capiolani and there's the uh, opera, there are music, there's music and yes. a lot of that kind of festivity. Correct. So it's not the Correct. normal tour where they oh, just no. sort of take you around no, no, no. It's tell geared, you to visit the shop. <laughs> it's geared towards the history of Queen Kapiolani yes. uh, in particular. Okay. Yeah. And is are one of the docents dressed up like her? Is it a special person mm. who's trained to sort of mimic sure. her style or something like that? Or? Well, we have a policy where we don't imitate anyone of, the, of the monarchy. I see. Okay. Is that considered yeah. rude or...? Uh, uh, it, it could it could be taken yes. as inappropriate, so yeah. we we don't. But we did have uh, Debbie Nakanalua Richards wear the replica gown. Oh, okay. And so this year she wore the peacock. Lucky lady. Gown. Yeah. Oh, the peacock gown. Yes. That's very pretty. Yes. Yeah. It, it was beautiful. And these these are gowns done by Iris Via Crucis, a uh, designer in Hilo. And they, they are just beautiful, beautiful mm. pieces. And so the, yeah. the reason I was asking that, it's pro obviously different in Hawaiian culture because I spent a lot of time in Kyoto as a visit mm -hmm. Kyoto ambassador. And they have many matsuri uh, oh, to okay. commemorate historical events mm -hmm. in the city of Kyoto because it was the capital of Japan for over a thousand years. And the local residents all dress up like famous characters mm. in Japanese history. Yeah. So you'll have the local, uh, very famous merchant who mm -hmm. has a kimono shop and he'll dress up like one of the famous shogun. Oh. <laughs> That's why I was asking yeah. about that. But it's obviously very different here. Yeah. It's a more solemn, it's taken very seriously yes. and it's not considered a thing to be trifled right. with. Right. So these are called moonlight tours uh, of Iolani Palace. Evening. Oh, evening. The okay. I, I thought evening I saw in the email yeah. said moonlight tours. Well, there is moonlight too. <laughs> yes, the moonlight, if, if the moon happens to be out that evening. Yes. So, uh, and it's only now three nights. You're going to continue the third night 
this we, year? We hope to do three nights again yes. next year, yes. And I mean who, this year. who are the people who seem to know about these? Are they more local residents, or are they the visitors that catch on to these exclusive, more special nights? Here's the thing we found out, is it's primarily locals who book for these tours. Mm. Because yeah. they've already, probably on a school trip, have seen the normal palace yes, tour. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed in your email, uh, because mm -hmm. people can sign up for a newsletter from the palace, is that correct? Mm -hmm. To receive yeah. um, communication right. on special events. Now, uh, I was abroad at the time, mm -hmm. and you had a fashion show during the autumn, is that correct? Uh, there was oh, a fashion yes. show? Yes, you he, forgot about that. No, <laughs> such a long time we, ago. We have so many yeah. things going yes. on. So you, I noted yeah. that there was a fashion show. I said, oh, I wish I could go see that. Yes. And can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, the designer was Kini Zamora. Oh, yes. We know him. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on Think Tech, I think, yes. <laughs> and it was very serendipitous how this came about. It's our, our director of development happened to be in New York City the same time he was. And they shared a taxi ride from the airport. Oh, okay. And in that taxi ride, there was a discussion where he said, you know, I've always had an idea of doing a fashion show or launching my line at the palace grounds. Oh. And of course, then she's like, you know, we've been thinking about something oh. like this. And from that, that's how it that's happened. That's how it happens. Yeah. Always accidents exactly. and serendipity, coincidence. And, yeah. and uh, w was it open to the public or the people had to purchase tickets? for purchase It was kind tickets. of like a VIP yes. event, yes. right? Okay. Correct. And what kind of fashion was on display? Was it more traditional, uh, monarchical style clothes? Or it was his oh. own design? is kind of own avant-garde. It was own design. designs based off of the Palaka oh, design. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. That was yeah. something. And there are it's photos of this on the palace website, perhaps people can take a look at? There is, yeah, and as well as on Akini Zamora's website as well. Okay, yeah. brilliant. And yeah. also, in addition to the course and the special mm -hmm. events, um, you also have some other little projects going on in terms of the museum. Yes. So what's going on with the museum? Because this is kind of the last part of the tour. Uh, as people, after they finish viewing the kitchens, I think. Then they yes. get sent to the, the museum area where oh, the beautiful yeah. jewelry is kept, yes, the yes. butterfly, the famous butterfly brooch right. and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, we, so we're working on uh, restoring the rest of the, the basement galleries. So it's only about half done uh, since 2001. And we've never been able to do the rest until now where we have the designs in place. So these are going to be new exhibits. Mm -hmm. We're going to be expanding the story of the monarchy. So the king, King Kalakaua went around the world, the first mm -hmm. monarch to do so. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a gallery about that, Hawaii and the world and our relationships with other countries. Okay. Yeah, that's we'll, one of them. Um, we'll get yeah. into a little bit okay. more of the ed tech uh, things in, going on in the palace, but we're okay. just going to take this really quick break, right. Kippen, and we'll be right back. Okay. With this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DT. Captain of our team. It's the DT. For every game day, assign a designated driver. Aloha, everyone. Welcome back. We're here speaking with Kippen de Alva Chu, who's executive director of Iolani Palace. And Kippen, we were just before the break talking about the activities that oh, yeah. can people can engage in in the museum section mm -hmm. of the palace. Yes. So uh, what else do you have a plan for the future in terms of educational technology for oh. children to play with in the museum and sure. things like that? Sure. OK. So part of this, the gallery renovation is going to include interactive displays. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to come about, but some of the things we've talked about is, okay, if Kalakau went around the world, how do you um, educate a child in that sense of how long it took? So either it's a globe or even a touch screen. How many days did it take to get from one place to another? And how did the king do this? And who did he visit? So that's one of the things we want to look at. Uh, there are also going to be a touch tables to introduce people to Hawaiian language. 
So Great. For, especially yes. for the, um, the monitors that we get, right? They can see, they can type up a word on a, on a big table screen and it'll come up in, in Hawaiian and it'll, it'll pronounce it for them as well. And you're uh, going to continue to have that, uh, the, the initial start of the tour seats everybody in a gallery with a video. Is that right? It's kind of across the gift shop. Are you going to keep that? We, uh, we are not sure, mm -hmm. yeah, because we will look most likely move the ticketing to the palace itself oh. rather than at the barracks. Oh, yes. Because people keep getting lost. Oh, really? It, yes, it, it, yeah. yes I, I, <laughs> I did hear some people walking around. Yes. Uh, th there was one, I, they, they were from Oceania. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were, one of the friends was telling her friend, oh, that's the palace, but they were yeah. pointing at the barracks. Yes. And it's more okay. the, the beautiful building behind <laughs> That is the actual yeah, palace. Right, so I think there's right. a confusion there, and then there's yes. the bandstand, uh, yes, which is also yeah. very important uh, for ceremonial purposes. Yes. So, um, and also, is it difficult for people to park in the area? Do you think that's why people avoid going to the palace? Possibly, yeah. yes, for local residents. It is, there's only a limited amount of uh, parking, and a lot of times the legislature is using it, I mean, oh, right. because it's in session right now. Yeah. yeah. Now don't, yeah. don't they have their own sort of underground parking? Is that Yes, the, but they've been taking away the public parking slowly. <laughs> oh, I see, okay, yeah. so that's rather unfortunate. Yeah. So maybe that's something that puts people off, but right. it is really worth it to see if people have a chance yeah. to visit it. Um, the other thing we were discussing was, uh, we have the monarchical crowns, because mm -hmm. as a king and queen, you, yes. you can't be a king and king, queen mm -hmm. without a crown. Right. So you have, uh, it's David Kalakawa's and Queen Kapiolani's uh, crowns. Correct. And you have this plan to perhaps restore the crowns to their former glory. Mm -hmm. Is that because there are stones missing in them or do you just want to do a, uh, to make it as perfect as mm. possible? Uh, I don't know how okay. they look now. You just sent yeah. me a few photographs of right, it. So right. yeah. what's the issue with the crowns? How do they look now and how do you want them to look in terms of restoring them? Okay. So right right now, they look to to an untrained eye. They looked they look fine and also equal. Mm. The thing is, the king's crown yeah. uh, it was stolen shortly after the overthrow, and so the stones in it uh, is basically glass. It's not the actual stones, oh original gemstones, yes. opals, diamonds. Mm. Queen Kapilani's crown is original and it's intact. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the difference. So we would want to restore Kalakaua's crown and then perhaps do some conservation treatment, basically clean Kapiolani's crown. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's a project uh, that's, it's not a priority, yeah. and is that largely because uh, perhaps you need uh, financial assistance to do that? This it's is a, it's a major uh, undertaking, isn't it? Yes, it is. So yeah. if people want to help out out there, yeah. <laughs> please contact the palace, because <laughs> I think it's worth having yeah. a proper set of monarchical yeah. crowns, yeah. Uh, so to bring full gl glory mm -hmm. to the royal yeah. residence. And once, if and when that is completed, where mm -hmm. would you uh, display these? The They're currently displayed in the throne room. Okay, in a case. and you would keep them there. You'd most likely keep them there. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Now, uh, Kippen, we're just gonna. You're mm -hmm. interesting because uh, you're in the past and the future. Because <laughs> not only are you executive director <laughs> yeah. of Iolani Palace, but you're also involved with First Robotics. <laughs> and the reason I'm bringing this up yeah. is that my guest for tomorrow's show on We Like the One Percent, uh, we're yeah. going to discuss robotics with Michael. Okay, and you work on FIRST Robotics together, but yes. in different capacities. Yes. So we're going to dive into it in great, uh, in great detail tomorrow morning. Okay. But can you just talk about your activities with robotics? Because um, <laughs> you remind me of Japan, you know, the, the old and the new. <laughs> Nothing really sure. in the present. You're sort sure. of uh, in the past with the monarchy and the royal residence in Iolani Palace. Yeah. But then you're interested in the future and in, in robotics. So sure. why are you interested in robotics? I, I was actually recruited to join the board of the Friends of Hawaii Robotics. Uh, and since joining, I, I've learned a lot more about robotics. And I just, I find it fascinating because I thought during my time in high school, I would have never been interested in, mm. in programming a robot. But the fact is that they can do it now. And maybe if going back in time, that might have changed perhaps my career tra trajectory. Oh, it definitely would have changed mine. <laughs> because at the, at the time we were going to university right. or college, yeah. the, there was no computer, I mean, not as much computer related or technology related things like AI or robotics. Oh, no, I was looking yeah. at punch cards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know definitely I'd be making robots now because I'd rather employ those it, it, than certain people exactly, I've had to deal with. <laughs> right. No, and, and, and they're, doing they're doing an autonomous portion at the competition and then the one where they're actually manipulating the robot. But it's just, it's fascinating to see this happening at this level 
And it's also going into the elementary school level as well. It's very exciting. Yeah. And I just want, I'm curious, uh, because of your involvement with robotics, mm -hmm. um, is there an interest in, once they're kind of more humanoid looking, mm -hmm. maybe replicate, is it still considered mm -hmm. inappropriate to the Hawaiians if you were to make a robotic version, a, a mannequin of the king and queen? Uh, would that still cross the line a bit, uh, that cultural decency? Or would it be a compliment? Because then you can have an almost lifelike, yeah. you can bring them back to life in a way. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say that there, there would be people who would take offense to it. Mm. There would also be others who would say that there's no way you could actually replicate them. And so doing something like this only cheapens their memory. Mm. Yeah. Because, because what, what I found interesting, I went to several conferences related mm -hmm. to technology and robotics, and what they observed, which it's not the case with me, uh, people mm. actually quite like the robots that kind of have the dots and dashes as a face, mm. as opposed to a full lifelike human looking uh, person, a realistic yeah. person. That seems to disturb humans more. Yeah. Where I actually like it if it mimics a person properly. Mm. Okay. Um, so it's, a, it's an aesthetic thing, because I, I find the ones that kind of look cartoonish to be ugly, mm, um, but the, the ones that kind of are, are as polished as possible, mm -hmm. I think Sophia or something, she's the honorary yeah. robotic citizen of Saudi Arabia, <laughs> which is <laughs> interesting because of <laughs> the regime there. But yeah. uh, anyway, so I, I just thought that would be interesting to see what Hawaiians thought of such an idea because it would enhance the beauty of the displays in the palace, I think. Uh, not necessarily yeah. to have them walking and talking or do that, I think that might be mm. disturbing. But to have a sort of a lifelike version in the palace, um, I don't know mm. if that would be offensive in your opinion. Or do you have a group of people who think about these things at the palace? Yeah, like your board, board, board of advisors. Board of, the board of directors. Yeah, board yeah. of directors. Uh, it, it's like wax figures. Mm. You know, we, we could do wax figures, yeah. but will we? I can tell you no. No, no you <laughs> definitely no, wouldn't. We would not do that. It, it, it's a very sensitive issue mm. uh, because Having the overthrow anniversary last week, mm -hmm. the, the issue of Hawaii is still unresolved yes. in, in, yes. in many ways. Legally yeah. it is, because yeah, it's not as though law. the kingdom is over, it was just sort of annexed. So, But even that, that with the annexation, yeah. right? Um, there's issues on whether that was done according to international law. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, but the International Commission of Inquiry was supposed to have met last week. Oh, Right. on the palace grounds for two days in its fact-finding uh, regarding the Larson versus Hawaiian Kingdom case that was right. filed in 2000. They, they postponed for procedural reasons, but they at some point are going to come to Hawaii. Okay, and um, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the details of this case? Because not many people are aware of such things uh, oh, outside uh, of Hawaii. Sure. Uh, actually, uh, one of our board members, Mark Schkloff, uh, did mm -hmm. a program like this with Law Across the Sea. Yes. Keanu Sai, <laughs> Law Across the Sea, yes. uh, regarding this case. Basically, it's uh, uh, a Big Island resident uh, got a number of parking tickets and he said that the county was not the legal government, that he was still a subject of the Hawaiian kingdom. So he didn't pay and he didn't abide by um, the county yes. rules. Mm -hmm. So he was placed in jail, right. apparently. So he sued the Hawaiian kingdom for not protecting his rights. All right. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds really fascinating, Kiffin. <laughs> okay, so we'll have to follow this case. And uh, one way we can do it, do you give updates of things like this if people sign up to the Iolani Palace newsletter? Or is it something they have to follow no. independently? This is, this is uh, yes. we would have to follow with the international okay. court. But yeah. everything else is uh, regarding the palace and the museum, they oh. can just go to, is it iolanipalace.org? iolanipalace.org. Iolani yep. And we want as many people, whether you're a visitor or a local, to visit this beautiful structure, mm -hmm. amazing yeah. feat of architecture. Architecture. And yeah. thank you again so much for being my guest today, Kevin. Oh, my pleasure. And yeah. I'll see you yeah. next Wednesday at yeah. 2 p.m. for Outside In. Thank yeah. you very much. Aloha. Aloha.